heard about the U.S.-China one, where the officials went their separate ways. They're talking back to their superiors, see what happened in terms of getting talks going again. Of course, uh, the ongoing NAFTA talks with Mexico, uh, Canada, part of that. Many had hoped that they would have a deal in place by now. There, they're getting close, though, to former chief of staff for Paul Ryan, David Hoppe, and market watcher Craig Smith on what to make of all of this. So, David, to you first. No Mexico deal yet. Obviously, it could be a matter of dotting the I's, crossing the T's. We're told that will be the first one scored. Uh, what do you think? Well, you always hold your breath, Neil, when one of these is close. But it does appear that this agreement with Mexico on autos particularly is very close to happening. That would be a great positive, I think, because I think it would take some of the pressure off the tariffs on right. European autos or getting something done on that or moving forward on that. And it also may give us a line into and a vision into what might be done with European autos so that we can lower tariffs there, hopefully, and get rid of them as opposed to raising tariffs. So I think this Mexico one is very important, and we are holding our breath right now. Um, Craig, I know we can get into the weeds about this, that the, the, the big hang-up and the, the, the differences have to do with how much of the vehicle is ultimately constructed in North America versus elsewhere. I get that. But if, if you'll pardon me and step back from this and look at the possibility of, of if we get a deal with the Mexicans, obviously the markets will think it, we're on the verge of getting something with the Canadians uh, or just the opposite. What do you think? Well, I'm pretty optimistic that the, that the trade talks with Mexico are going to turn out very positive for us. I'm not as optimistic, Neil, about China. I think the, what we didn't see in that statement today from everybody that was negotiating in Washington is more, more uh, revealing than what was, not, what was in the statement. And that was that there will be no further talks. There aren't any scheduled talks right now. And I think that really America is—we we have a problem with China right now, Neil, and we have to deal with it. Yeah, you know, they seem to be our, our, our biggest threat for the time being, David. Uh, obviously, the president prefers, you know, dealing country by country. Uh, that's why he's talking to Mexico uh, on this NAFTA thing. After that, potentially Canada. Um, but China does seem to be our biggest problem, and we don't seem to be making much progress there. What do you think of that? Well, the meeting that's being held today in Washington between the European Union, Japan, and the U.S. on China on WTO and China's position in WTO, I think, is a very hopful meeting. You're talking about the World Trade Organization. That's well, right. Ahead. And what I think putting that meeting together and focusing on a strategy that takes China to the WTO to make them live by the rules of the WTO, first of all, make sure that they are no longer treated as a, as a developing country, but also so they aren't stealing intellectual property, they're not coercing people into giving some of the, their trade secrets and background and information to them. That is the strategy I think we should be pursuing on China. So I'm very hopeful that that meeting will help set out a better, uh, better road for working with China. But I agree that the, the meetings they had the last two days did not go very far. You know, um, Craig, uh, both you and David are experts on this stuff. I'm not, but I have a couple of crackpot theories. One is that the Chinese particularly are going to wait out the midterms. The, I think they're very convinced that this is going to hurt Republicans in states like Pennsylvania and Illinois, even Texas, where a lot of these measures, these trade uh, tariffs that the president's considering are very, very unpopular. Um, and they're going to see what happens after that before they make a concession. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right, Neil. I think that the Chinese are very, very strategic in their thinking, and they're taking into consideration the elections that are coming up and how the American people are going to perceive this administration and its ability to be able to not only say they're going to get something done, but actually get it done, Neil. And look, the Chinese have identified three areas that are very key to the United States trade officials. One is increasing China's purchases of American goods. Number two is opening up new markets for American goods, which I think over time can happen in China, both those issues. The third issue, though, this whole idea of intellectual properties and forcing American tech companies to give them, you know, code and so on and so forth, I don't think the Chinese are going to give on that, Neil. And I think that's where you're going to see the real sticky mess come. Look, we've, we have $50 billion in goods that are being charged 25 percent tariffs right now as tit for tat. We're threatening another $200 billion. I, I, I'm just not sure, Neil, that the Chinese are willing to give us what we need. And I think Mr. Trump needs to really think twice and, and quite frankly, Neil, get all of his players on the same page. Mnuchin and David Malpass Paz are talking a whole lot different than Peter Navarro. And no, I think you're right all about that. No, you're right. They're all over the map.
I really believe I, that, Neil. And unless he has a one theme, I think he's going to have a tough time getting a deal done. David, you're going to say? I, I, I agree with that. But I think the theme is that if we work together with our allies in Europe and work with Japan, we all have a shared interest in the Chinese working in the world trade community fairly. And um, if absolutely. we get together, the rest of the world gets together and tells the Chinese and tells the World Trade Organization they have to live up to the standards of that group. That's where we will have the most leverage rather than going by ourselves or just through tariffs from the U.S. on China. Well, I love yeah, you just to David, but I'm telling you, I mean, I have high hopes for going on a diet and eating healthy, and it is yet <laughs> to materialize. All right, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but, guys, thank you both. Have a wonderful weekend. You're the best, and I do appreciate it. Uh, we're also keeping track, talking about the weekend. We're going to be live this weekend. We're following uh, Hurricane